It's World Watercolor Month 2021. There are daily prompts. They're optional, but for those who want to follow them, you can find them at the doodlewash.com website. Today's prompt is effervescent, and it did take me a little thought to come up with an idea for that, but then I realized effervescent and the word fizzy mean about the same thing. And so we're going with a fizzy drink. I'm using the Zenart Allegro watercolor set. All the colors here. It comes with two brushes and that will be more than enough for what we need. I'm going to be using the Zenart sketchbook. This is a mixed media sketchbook not really meant, or not formulated for watercolor, but it actually handles watercolor decently. This is what we're going to be doing. Part of what I'll discuss will be what you might expect from a paper like this that isn't really meant for watercolor. Um, it, I, they aren't, I won't say they're problems, but they're things that you can expect and you'll be less frustrated if you're expecting them. I'll also be using this Sharpie. Uh, any permanent marker will do. Uh, I was going for kind of a stylized look with a bold line, so uh, you want one that has a fairly broad tip. I've already, as you see with this one, it's got these nice white corners. I've already used my masking tape. Uh, There's an inch and a half, I believe, for the size. That's not really as important as the fact that besides nice clean uh, frame around the painting, you will be protecting the rest of the pages in the sketchbook. I went with this wider tape because I can extend it around and actually block off the rest of the book. And most importantly is you want to make sure that you cover this section right here because paint can seep in in the seam and then you'll open it up like you know, 10, 12 pages later and you'll just see there's a stain running along there where the paint had gone in. So I've already got this all set up here and ready to go. Okay. So for, I'm not about precision and this is sort of a almost comic book style. So don't worry, you know, if, if you get things looking a little off-center or anything else. You start with just a line. And, and in fact, I'm a little crooked here. And then we're just going to make a big U. And that's our drawing for today. Oh, I take that back. We're going to... Having these lines, I did three of them. This shows where the glass is. This shows that there is something in front of the glass. And having this behind shows that there's something behind the glass. That just makes it a little bit, it gives it a little bit of depth. Since it's a comic book style, it really doesn't matter a lot, but it, it helps the eye add depth that isn't really there. So, this is a flat brush. I've got it really wet. I'm also going to use the water brush that has water in the barrel. And I'm going to start with Quinn Magenta, and I'm putting a few drops, I'm letting some drops go along the side there, because I want it to be nice and juicy. This isn't going to be like my Loose and Lovely where everything's puddling, but I definitely want to be able to pick up lots of paint on my brush. And I'm just, just running it down and getting it on both sides. Now one of the things that, that you will find with painting on a non-watercolor paper, uh, and it's going to be a little different depending on what it is, 
this is a fairly uh, hard surface it's not super absorbent it it does absorb and it, it will wrinkle some sometimes the painting will be streaky now with this it's drying fairly quickly that's partly the paper and partly the fact that it's very dry today or the humidity um, and you see where I overlap from my first stroke to my second this had already started drying, so this is darker where I overlapped and the fact that it was drying, it's going to leave a streak. But all you have to do is you just keep painting over it and you can even it out some. We're also not worrying too much in that we want a little bit of, uh, th this gives it some character, gives it the feeling that there's some liquid in here. We're going to kind of use those strokes. And Go from side to side. And I went off a little bit there. I don't worry about any of that. We'll just kind of work it in. Now that I went from side to side. And what I'm doing there now is kind of giving a feeling of depth. And we'll work that there. To give that kind of ellipse. That gives it a little bit of a feeling of perspective. do it for now. Now what I'm going to do is I've, I've wet my brush again. This isn't a brush that holds a whole lot of water. Uh, I want it to be very wet but not sopping. I don't want water dripping off of it. So I'm going to run it where I'm catching just a little bit where it softens that edge there and I'm kind of working it up I want it to be very light but this is because it's glass I'm just going to kind of give it that look of just like it's capturing a little bit of color because the glass itself is transparent okay. now if I had wa dirty water and water that was dirty enough I might just dip it in the water and paint with that not actually use any paint but this way I'm just catching a little bit of that okay now this is dry enough I'm going to go on to my next color yeah oh, there's my brush I'm going to use the lemon yellow I'll dip it in there and I'm going to use the uh, yellow deep it's right next to it as well and then I'm going to use the red ochre that's down here okay let that soak in a little bit grab some yellow there Sometimes you might have to wait a little bit. If you can see any shine to the paint here, then wait before brushing around it because uh, otherwise it's going to run together and you don't want it to do that. 
and the the style that I'm using this time sometimes you like leave a little white space and you can close up later I don't want to do that with this because that gives it a, a different look that I'm going for here now I'm stretching the paint here not going in and dipping more I want it to be lighter along here than I do along the sides because when you have a fizzy drink and all the drops are kind of going up there it it actually uh, produces kind of a mist so we want uh, the feeling of a little bit of a mist not a lot because this is still wet and I, I want to try and do this fast enough to make it when it's wet the colors will kind of blend more softly and it's not really wet enough that I'm going to get blossoms that's another thing this kind of paper you're not as likely to get those kind of where the paint kind of goes out and makes it look like a cauliflower or a flower blossom uh, this paper is fairly absorbent, so it, it grabs the paper right in. And you don't have to worry too much about that. Now, I don't know if you can tell, the paper is rippling a little bit. Not what I call dimpling. I, with, with dimpling, I would see like little scoops all along what's happening is the the paper actually ripples kind of along this way that's one of the things that happens good water color paper kind of prevents that from happening because of the way it's it's formulated and if you're using a non water color you can expect this to happen so having it taped down helps most definitely it's a characteristic you're just going to kind of have to to live with if you look at this though you can see that most of those ripples dried out there's a few of them here but not a whole lot okay let me use this and yes, I'm using slightly different colors than I did when I painted this one. Um, mainly just because I wanted to change things up. <laughs> and I felt this was kind of a prettier mix of colors. You can see I also did one that was yellow and blue. So this is not an exercise where you have to have the colors exactly that I have. And you can change it up a lot. Okay, now the paper, this paint had dried even just in the amount of time that I was kind of showing you that. So it's not blending in as much, but that's okay. We'll work around that. And essentially what I'm doing is going back, I'm grabbing the yellow deep, and I'm just going to go right over that. And kind of bring it up in here. And when the paint's starting to run out, and I'm not applying much in the way of pressure. In fact, at no time do I apply much pressure. I kind of just let gravity and what gets pulled off just as I touch it. We'll work that in there. Again, grabbing the yellow deep, adding it in here. So. Uh, kind of what I'm doing here is I'm mixing the paint on the paper and you'll probably see here that it's a little streaky I don't know if you can really see that the paint the brush is splaying a little bit That 
is to be expected. It's a synthetic brush, so synthetic brushes, especially your flat brushes, will splay like that. But it, it gives it a little bit more movement and character, so uh, again, you don't worry about it. Uh, if you do want a more solid color, using a different paper would help for that. Again, this is a non-watercolor paper, and it's one of the things you have to work with. But you can get that solid look using the same color. You would put down a layer, let it dry, put down another layer of the same color, let it dry, and keep adding those layers until you get the solid look that you want. Uh, each time you add a layer, you want to use a little less water and you're going to lose any sense of transparency. Now these are um, student paints, so you're not going to get a whole lot of transparency. I mean, they, they actually they are fairly transparent, but even with really trans, super transparent colors, the more you layer, the less transparency you get. With student grade, that will happen sooner. Now, so I was using different colors. I'm going to go with a French ultramarine blue. And this time I didn't add water to the color first because I don't want it to be too dark. And what I'm going to be doing here is just... Now I'm going to... You know, at the bottom of the glass you have that kind of that little uh, ring where it flattens. I'm just going to put a little bit of color in there. Bring it out a little bit. I'm seeing through glass. Oh, it's going to be reflecting various colors. And then I'll clean off my brush and grab a little bit more of the Quinn that I started with. Paint that in and kind of kind of blend it a little bit. Now what's happening here is I hurried a little too fast trying to move this along a little bit and I actually started to lift paint rather than putting more color down. That will happen sometimes even with watercolor paper. It's one of the characteristics. Some lift easier than others. Um, it happens more when you have more paint or more water, I should say. When you do a second layer or a glaze. This would be like more of a glaze because it's very thin. Some people, I actually kind of like paper that lifts very easily. Some people don't. But usually if it's not meant for watercolor it's going to do one of two things. One is it won't lift at all and the other is it will lift too easily. This one is one that lifts easily. So knowing that you plan for it and we'll make use of that in a few minutes. Now I'm going to let this dry and when I come back I'll show you how to make the reflection. Now to do the reflection of the glass I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this water barrel brush. I'm also going to use this paper towel and in essence because I know this is paper that's good for lifting I can lift I'll just get this really wet and dab it. Now I'm moving this. I am not scrubbing. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm dabbing down, moving it around and dabbing and just letting the water flow onto the paper. Uh, I don't know if you can see exactly how wet that is. It's pretty wet. Let it soak in a little bit. Dab at it. You see it's kind of getting a little uh, 
speckly there. Now there's not really much tooth to this paper. What's happening is we're actually damaging the paper here and it's kind of pilling up a little bit. It's really not pilling that bad. It, it, it is a good paper. A lot of paper by now, as wet as I got it and lifting it up, it, it would be just nothing but pills. Okay. So I think that I've got that light enough now. And I'm going to go in again. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and use this brush for the for the red. Well, no, I take that back. I'm going to go ahead and use the flat for this part. I'm grabbing up some of the Quinn Magenta. Now because it's still a little wet, because the paper is a little damaged there, it has a substantially different look from up here where the color is more solid. And when you put this down, don't don't put a whole lot of pressure. It'll work better if you don't. Get it darker because it's the closer to it. It'll be darker. It's going to catch more of that color when the light coming through there. Okay. And because we're reflecting, we have a little bit of blue there. So I'm just getting just a little bit of blue on my brush there. I'll try and kind of get it in the same. Doesn't have to be exact, but get just a touch more. While I'm at it, I'm going to add a little bit of blue up here too. Get a little bit more. That's give it a little bit more of that kind of glass feeling. Uh, run that along the edges. I'm even going to run it down along the edges here. I didn't do this with my last one, but it just seemed called for with this one. I picked up a little bit more of the magenta, which is fine. Turn this off, let that dry a little bit there. Okay, I think this is dried enough. I can go on to the next step. And some of you may be wondering why I chose to use a paper that's not watercolor paper. Uh, partly because it gave me the look that I was going for. And also because I know a lot of people want to do some watercolor but they don't particularly want to spend money for watercolor paper so I thought this was a good chance to kind of discuss like say you can get real frustrated if you don't know what to expect uh, this way you kind of know what to expect and how you can use it now I'm going to take a little bit more of the lemon and run it down along here and Add a little bit more. I'm using a fairly solid amount. It's not like a huge bit. But what I want to do is, of course, kind of get that feeling that there's the yellow light coming through there. Okay, now while that's working on that. Gouache, another form of watercolor. Very old, actually older than your traditional Western watercolor. Now I'm I'm putting a towel on here. This is true for any watercolor, but gouache maybe a little bit more. Sometimes when it dries around the lid, it'll flake, 
and you open it up and you get these little white or whatever the color is little bits of paint all over the place so I try and make sure and have a towel or something close by and wipe some of that off and I'm just gonna put just a, a little bit because I'm not going to use a whole mud, whole whole bunch of this gouache but we still have to make this drink fizzy first I'm going to paint a reflection now I'm going to wet my brush with clean water because I want my flat to be solid. I don't want it to splay at this point. And then I'm just going to take the gouache just, just a little bit there on the tip. And I'm going to kind of start up here. See there's I've already kind of got a gap there so I'm just going to reflection of the glass and I'll put another reflection here I'm not worried too much about reality and the light on that I just want to give that effect that's this isn't going to show a whole lot here but a little bit and then again I had talked about you know the flat part of the glass I'll get a little bit of water there okay and since we have a reflection there, uh, yeah, reflection off the glass, that reflection should show in the reflection. Doesn't have to be a little, a whole lot, but. Have it there in the reflection. Okay. Okay, that's that was too wet, so I'll come back and add a little bit more to that later. But meanwhile, let's get fizzy. Okay, going back to the water brush, gonna load it up with some white there, and in here I'm going to make a few, not too many, just little round dots. Now, if this if this hadn't isn't dry. Or if you have too much water in your brush, then this gouache will just kind of fade away and, and you won't see it as much as you might want. So you need to have it fairly thick. I, I, in essence, I'm taking it pretty much the way it was right out of the tube and I'm taking care not to squeeze water out of my water brush. And usually you have bunch of bubbles down towards the bottom try and, and be random don't don't make like a specific set of rows because it well it's cartoony so if you want to do that go ahead but it, it it doesn't look quite as real if you do it that way now I can tell I, I squeezed a little bit too much there, so that's going to fade, but that's okay. We'll, after this dries, we'll look at it and see if we need to add more. So that, there's nothing here that you really need to worry. You know, if it, it doesn't work exactly the way you wanted it to, you can go back and make some changes to save that. Now I'm going to do this kind of, just barely touching the tip of the brush. I want little teeny teeny tiny tiny so tiny you can almost not see them but when you get a whole bunch of them it gives you that fizzy effect right over here. now it isn't going to show a whole lot here I'm going to put a few the white now I'm going to wipe off the white gouache here. I'm going to go ahead and really, really clean that off. And I'm going to pick up just, just touch. I don't know if you can even see that I've got paint on there. Just a little bit. Because dark, when you mix colors, dark can do it fast. Okay, so... 
We'll get it a little darker than that. Go ahead and clean off the brush again. So I don't want to get the gouache into the paint. Put a little bit more on there. And mix. What I want is a very pale version of this color. And it needs to be a little darker yet. Okay. lot of different ways you could do this and that might even look better um, using masking fluid is one way of doing that but I wanted quick and simple uh, something that you could do if you had this set you wouldn't need a whole lot of extra stuff let's add a few Yeah, I even put a few bubbles there. Yeah, let's go ahead. All right, that's still too wet down there. Okay, let's let this dry and see what happens. Okay, I think I've got things dry enough here. So, I want my brush to be damp. But so that my flat isn't splaying out. I don't have those gaps at the end of the bristles. Pick that up there. And right there. And even though this isn't you're much better taking the water brush and adding those, but I went ahead and put a few bubbles there. Yeah. You don't want to put a whole lot of bubbles in the reflection. take this. I don't want it to be quite that dark. Okay. Now, if you don't like this bold line, then take some of that gouache. Just kind of dab it. Don't like totally eliminate it, but Especially the areas where you've got your reflection there, you can kind of just break it up a little bit. And I'll use the colored version. This is kind of an optional. I mean, some people like that really bright, really bold line, and some people find it disturbing. So it's totally up to you whether you do this or not. Gouache is more opaque. You can find watercolors that are as opaque as gouache. Uh, but generally speaking, that's one of the characteristics of gouache is the fact that it's more opaque. Now the other difference is that it dries with a different finish. Uh, watercolors kind of have a shine to them. Gouache 
dries flat, can, can be chalky sometimes, just like opaque watercolors. But it, it, it's not quite the same. You may have actually used it without realizing it if you used poster paints when you were in school. That's a very cheap version of gouache. Good gouache is, is much better than poster paint, but it's, they're part of the same family, as it were. I'm going to... Okay, now I'm fussing, and I wasn't going to fuss with this one. So I think that's probably about it. Go. Bottoms up.